Hey Math 31, I had a question coming out of section 3.6, number 33, and we were asked to use this graphing utility to graph this function up here and then take a look at it on the window negative 5 to 5. So let me go into my y equals and let's go type this in. So I've got negative 100. And to do the absolute value function, hit your math key. It's two below the, the second key, the blue key. Um, scroll right by one, get to your number drop down menu, and that first option is your absolute value function. So we just have the absolute value of x in there. Great. Let me close that parentheses and then add 100 to it. And then I'm going to hit zoom six just to start, but I am going to adjust my window. So that's looking really funky. I, I can't really see it that well. So let me go ahead and adjust my window. And they said, hey, why don't you go from negative five to five? So let me try that. Whenever you adjust your window, don't hit zoom six again. It'll just set you back to negative 10 and 10 for X min and max. And we want to keep it at negative five and five. So I'm going to hit graph. And I still can't see everything. Now, if I take a look at the transformation here, it's been shifted 100 units up. So one thing I definitely want to do is I don't want my Y max to be at 10. I need it to be at 100. And since it's also been reflected over the x-axis, I know it's going to be a downward shaping V. So I'm going to have that maximum point there at 100. So let me at least put this at 100. And I'm going to change my Y scale. I don't want them to make a tick mark every one unit because that would be so many tick marks. For right now, I'll just have them go every 10 units. And again, whenever you adjust your window, hit graph. So let's see, I, I'm starting to see it a little bit better, but it does want us to find the range. So if I want to find the range, what I'd really like to do is plug in negative five to my function and see what the Y value is and plug in positive five. So to do that, let me do a quick calculation. I'll hit second calc or second trace, it calls up your calc screen. Let me just do option one. Let's plug in negative five and see what we get. It looks like we have a Y value of negative 400. Keep that in mind, right? Negative 400. Now let me plug in positive 5. And I get negative 400 again. So while my Y max is up at 100, my Y min is down at negative 400. So let me go lower this. It's only negative 10 right now. I'm going to go to negative 400. And I don't even want to go by 10s anymore. I'm going to go by 100s. So I'm going to just see a little tick mark on the Y axis every 100 units. Let's hit graph. And now I'm able to see that thing, right? So there's my entire graph. There's my downward shaping B, right? We can see this is up at positive 100, 0, negative 100, negative 200, negative 300, negative 400. Now the X scale is totally different, right? This is just negative 5 to 5. So negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, so on and so forth over to 5. But from there, I can figure out my range. My range starts down here. My range, excuse me, starts down here at negative 400 and it goes up to positive 100, which is why you see me writing that on my graph screen here, or um, on my answer here. And just looking, um, I, it looks like the, the homework solutions, I, I, went, I went a little bold, all right? I said, hey, why don't you send your Y max up to 500? You can, all right? So if I wanted to change this, if I would just say, hey, let's go all the way up to 500, I absolutely could. I could still see my entire graph. You don't need all of this vertical space up here, but you do have that option. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.